First I wanted to show you my materials because I hope this Pagan all mini sandak and I wasn't even gonna bring it. I got it at half price used. But it seemed like it wouldn't be useful because I can keep all my stuff in my bag. But in fact this has been wonderful. I have my pen, I have a pencil, backup pen, beautiful travel brushes, but I've been using these um, water brushes. And then here I can keep my spritzer, which is useful if I need water or clean up the mess on the palette. A eraser, which one should use very sparingly, everybody says, and some clips, which with this particular sketchbook I haven't needed so much, but it's good to have them. And then in here is a perfect spot for a tin of handmade watercolors. It's a licorice tin that I repurpose for this and this is my 2019 summer travel palette to which I added mica. But here I have lemons which is my invention of a mix of uh, cool and a warm yellows. I have a Quebec raw sienna. I have a French mineral called jasper which is very useful for painting people an Italian pigment called um, Carminio. It's a, I'll show you, it's a very dark, intense red earth. A mysterious color I call dark earth. I mixed this before going on a trip and I didn't label it and I came back, I couldn't remember what it was. It's a blackish brownish dark. This is a bone black, which is from a Sinopia pigment. Again, an add-on is a gold mica. This is a gorgeous Italian solferino that for this palette I renamed Bougainvillea. This is Cerise, which is a neutral red from Senelier. This is my genuine brass from Italy. Then I have um, a cool blue, which I call Ocean. A warm blue, which is Celeste. It's a light ultramarine. A very powerful turquoise that I use sparingly, but when I do it's very nice to have. And then two greens. One is a emerald green by Poggi. It's a bluish cool green and this is called Foresta. It's a dark forest green. And then my wonderful wonderful sketchbook and I'll do a flip through another time but this is made by Automat Sketchbook Company and it has in it wonderful arches cold press paper and it's my first time using a sketchbook that has um, spiral bound it's really good for traveling especially if you want to take a picture of your sketch showing the background and now this table is kind of bouncy Unfortunately, this is not my favorite side of Arches paper. This is my favorite side of Arches paper. You know what? I'm going to skip a page and use it. Most of the pages are on this side, which is, I think, regarded as the wrong side, but I like it better. So, my pencil sketch is always very light because I often change my mind about what I want to include or not. So if it's light I can paint over it. And I'm not trained in architectural drawing or anything like that so my lines are highly imperfect. So I have this building here that has three windows and then some kind of covered thing here and then down here there's another 
building with two arches. And then there's this other, just slightly taller building that has like a balcony up top, two tall doors, another balcony here, and then greenery. Which is my favorite thing to see and my least favorite thing to paint. Then there's a taller, small building here with a balcony and another balcony. Remember these buildings face the sea so understandably the people who built here wanted to make the most of the view. It's not like oh they live here they don't appreciate it they do appreciate it and the buildings tend to be turned towards the sea. There's a random pink um, shutter. Then I have this one here that has, it's interesting because the, the shutters ha are very many different colors. And I'm not against getting rid of some buildings, but here I think the charm of this view is that it has this row of buildings in the middle of the greenery. There seems to be some kind of palm tree up there, or some frondy tree. So here I have this little house, little house. This has two shutters. As you see, I'm just marking where the shutters are. And I don't need to draw them carefully. So this is it. I have this very simple drawing and then the houses to which it refers. Now, I have my watercolors here. It's a metal table so that <laughs> the magnets on the bottom I get very hard. And my two water brushes are kind of low. I hope I have enough. This is a thick one and this is a thin one. My spritzer and I often spritz the watercolors to activate them but I'm enjoying using or making the most of the the grain of the paper. Therefore, I forgot to mark greenery here. If my paints are not too wet, they're drier, I can do some dry, dry brush markings that I'm quite fond of. Now, many of my sketches are pure architectural, but here, there's actually some sky. So I'm doing again, taking advantage of the grain of the paper because one of the most important things I think, at least for me, to be pleased with my sketch is to leave a lot of white. Loose drawing and lots of white. And I wipe these on paper towel. Look, this is from a hotel. 
I notoriously take an extra napkin when I go out because somehow I seem to never have enough. The next thing I'll do is just with the jasper, which is very light, I will just mark the roofs. And most of the roofs here are basically tile. So this is a nice first layer indicating a tile roof. And I am perfectly happy with a broken line that a fairly dry brush produces. So for the blue I use the two major blues, not the turquoise, because it's too bright. And so Celeste and and ocean. And here I'm marking also the balconies, just it's a very unobtrusive color and I can go over it with most. This area here is kind of grayish. And so I'm mixing the emerald with the cerise. And this emerald is so bluish that... Oh, now well this works. This is gray. When I mix it with the bougainville, which is a bluer red, I end up, instead of gray, which you would expect from mixing green and red, I end up with a absolutely gorgeous... This is just kind of wet, so it's not doing dry mark. A gorgeous, I was saying, violet. But this is a nice gray, cerise and emerald. And I'm going to use it to further mark these houses because one possible problem with the loose sketch is that you kind of lose your definitions. And then the Foresta, the reason I picked this for this travel palette is that it works really nicely for the green shutters of the Mediterranean. One of these is covered by greens, but there is so much green in this um, scene that I'm happy to get rid of some of it and replace it with shutters and other architectural marks. These are green too, and I wouldn't be against changing the colors of the shutters for variety, but here there is a really need for that because there is in fact a pink shutter over here. Not quite so bright, but taking some liberty here. And then there are, so I use Bougainville for that. And then there's some natural wood color shutters here for which I'm using the raw sienna. At this point, hmm, I think I'm gonna put a, since I have it on the brush, I'm gonna put some raw sienna touches of it for variety. These shutters, it's not clear what color they are, so I'm going to make them like this, just to give some company to the other ones. In fact, I'm going to make another sh pink shutter here, 
looking at her friend over there. A little bit more of the gray, this light gray, to mark this. And now is the part that stresses me out. And I know it shouldn't. But it's the greens. I'm going to do something that I'm doing here for the first time. And that is do the initial greens as somewhat dry. brushes and I'm going to keep adding to that pool of green that I have see I use this I know it's not white and you're supposed to have a white um, palette but oh, it's not a problem I know there's some makers that actually um, use a product that I think it's um, I have it actually I just haven't dared use it it's a paint meant to be used to touch up like ceramic porcelain bathtub so you have like a white paint it's a little bit too much for me though at some point I'm gonna have to try it uh, I'm not sure yet. There is a, a little building that is probably a shack to keep materials for the cultivation of lemons. So it's a little bit further down, but I'm putting it here for interest. Then the other thing I want to suggest here, and I'll do it with negative painting is the lines for lemons the I think it's um, chestnut gray chestnut Um, poles and I'm going to put them here and I'm basically doing this to remind me not to go crazy with the greens I hope it works some here So I go back to my green mixture, but first I want to suggest the presence of lemons by some lemon like and while I have yellow here I'm gonna add it here and there So 
nice breeze in this area makes it fast for the watercolor to dry. Now let's go back to the architectural. Just making these poles a little more defined with some bone black. Which easily calls a lot of attention to itself. So you gotta make sure you put it elsewhere too. Then I'll take this Carminio, which is, as I mentioned, very powerful. It's a good one to do the darker underside. And here's a whole roof. And it does make a lovely gray mixed with ocean. It's under here, it's more shady. I'm using the set of the brush to get a rougher sense. And, you know, part of me wants to give some shadow on this side, but in fact the whole thing is in the light right now, and I hesitate to change that. Um, I just want to add more black throughout the painting. Otherwise, the eye will just go to the black of the and and what's interesting, speaking of black, is this black netting that they use to protect the lemons at a certain time of year against bad weather.
I'm using the gray to give a little bit of dimension to this and a little bit more dark green on the underside. Now obviously there is green everywhere but I'm just suggesting it here and there. I'm leaving a lot of it white. I'm not crazy with this because it's too green. There's not enough white. And I'm not crazy with these either. I'm going to muss it up a bit. a bit of blue to give a little sense of dimension to these nets. Um, low in water. The watercolor is worst nightmare. about the lemons but I do like this part and before I mess it up I'm gonna call it done and then I like to write the name of the place in watercolor so this would be Um, tiny town, it's not even its own town, it's called the Frazione, a fraction of, or a suburb of, though it's not really a suburb, of Scala. And then, the year in Roman numerals. 2010 9 2019 